Lesson 2 has several parts. Most of them are review. The first part is on negative exponents. Now, let's just start by understanding 2 to the third power. Hopefully you remember that that just means 2 times 2 times 2. That's a definition. When we have that exponent, that means we multiply 2 out 3 times in a row, and that equals 8. Now, do you remember what you do when you have 2 to the negative third? Well, you just write it over 1, write everything over 1, and you change the sign of the exponent. That's another definition. And that would just equal 1 eighth. So to talk about this just in terms of variables, that value 2 that we have there, we call that the base, and then the 3, we call that the exponent. And so we could say x for the base, negative n for the exponent. That's equal to 1 over x to the n. And then in the same way, 1 over x to the negative n, that equals x to the positive n. So if you have a negative exponent in the numerator and you want to make it positive, check, move the base and the exponent to the denominator and change the sign. If you have a value with a negative exponent in the denominator and you want to make it sign positive, then move the base and the exponent to the numerator, change their sign. Let's go ahead and look at part B and C of this lesson together, the product and power theorems for exponents. The product theorem, remember that if you had like x squared times x cubed, that equals x to the fifth. And we add exponents. When we have similar bases multiplied together, we just add the exponents to simplify that. Just think about it. We have x times x times x times x times x, or x multiplied out five times. And so that's why we have x to the fifth. So writing this in terms of variables, we could say x to the m times x to the n equals x to the m plus n. That's the product theorem. When we have bases multiplied together, the product of those bases is equal to the base raised to the sum of the exponents. The power theorem, look at this, if you had x squared parentheses to the third power, what that means is you're multiplying x squared out three times. So that'd be x squared times x squared times x squared equals x to the sixth. You can get it the, another way just by multiplying the two by the power on the outside. Two times three is six. So the power theorem is x to the m, all of that to the power of n. We always call that exponent on the outside of parentheses the power. x to the m to the power of n is equal to x to the m times n. Let's go ahead and do some practice problems. Look at practice problem A over on the right. I want you to simplify that relationship negative 3 inside parentheses to the negative 2 power. And so we want to simplify that. We need to make the exponent positive. That should be the first thing that comes to your mind when the problem says to simplify and you see a negative exponent, you say, oh, I've got to get that positive. So that means I move the number to the denominator. I say 1 over negative 3, keep it in parentheses, and I'll have a positive exponent of 2 now instead of a negative. And so I rewrite that 1 over 9 because negative 3 times negative 3 is just a positive 9. 1 over positive 9. And then in B, I'm saying the whole quantity there is negative. When you have a negative out front, that's what that's expressing. The whole quantity is negative. So you just take the 3 to the minus 2 and you put that underneath or in the denominator and make it 3 to the positive 2, a negative sign out front of all of that, and so that equals negative 1 ninth. So the top one was positive 1 ninth, the bottom one was negative 1 ninth. It's important that you distinguish the difference between those two problems. Look at practice problem C. Now I want you to simplify that using the product and the power theorem. 
and usually on these problems they should tell you if they want all of the exponents positive or all the exponents in the numerator all the variables in the denominator just however they want it on this one I want you to write it with all the exponents positive so you may end up with variables in the numerator and denominator just that the exponents have to be positive for all of them so first let's go through and use the power rule first anytime we see a problem with the power rule in it that's what we should try to simplify first is the power rule and so we have in that first term there we would have an a to the ninth b to the sixth because we multiply that three on the outside by the exponents on the inside and then the next one will have an a to the negative one and a b to the negative three and then on the bottom we have a zero power anything raised to the power of zero just equals one so all of that quantity on the inside of the parentheses equals one and so we can just ignore that and think of that as a factor of one and so we just end up with a to the third b to the fourth next let's go ahead and simplify the numerator and then we'll simplify the denominator and so we have in the numerator we always have to multiply similar variables together then we can add their exponents we can't multiply the a and the b together and add up a to the ninth b to the sixth is a b to the fifteenth that doesn't work you can only multiply similar variables together or similar bases so the a to the ninth and the a to the minus one that would be an a to the positive eight and then the b to the six and the b to the minus three would be a b to the positive three over a to the third b to the fourth okay and then we simplify that anything in the denominator we can just subtract we can say a to the eighth minus three and so that would be a to the fifth why can we do that well just think about it we could move that a to the third up to the numerator and change the sign so then we'd have an eight minus three or we can just recognize that and subtract so the b's we'd end up with a b to the minus one because we'd have a three and a negative four but we want to write all the answer with all the exponents positive so just leave the b down in the denominator leave a b to the one down there we don't have to write the one as a positive exponent because remember that's understood we never write like x as x to the one or a times a to, as a to the one we just write it like the letter exponents of one are understood so we don't write those and so there's the simplified expression a to the fifth over b let's look at the last part of this lesson on circle relationships the best way to understand this lesson is just to do some practice problems and look at practice problem d it says the area of a circle is 36 pi centimeters squared what is its circumference so we have to figure out the circumference based on that information the area is 36 pi centimeters squared when you see these problems the best way to do them is to think of the formulas involved with that particular question so remember what I have written there in red think of your circle formulas okay so let's think about the area of a circle that's equal to pi times the radius squared the circumference is equal to 2 times pi times the radius okay so keep those in mind we need to figure out the circumference they gave us the area is 36 pi centimeter squared so that means 36 times pi and so let's just set that equal to the formula 36 times pi so we have pi r squared equals 36 times pi so just focus on what I have highlighted now pi r squared equals 36 pi you can see that we could solve that for the radius if we knew what the radius was we could figure out the circumference because look at our circumference formula 2 times pi times the radius so we could cancel pi from both sides and we just end up with r squared let's go ahead and do that cancel the pi's and we have r squared equals 36 and we think of what times what equals 36 well that would be a 6 so the radius equals 6 substitute that into the circumference formula c is equal to 2 times pi times 6 that would equal 12 times pi 
Now we can just leave our answer like that. We could multiply it out 12 times 3.14, but that's okay. We can just leave it 12 times pi, and a lot of times in the book, they'll stop there. It'll be an answer in terms of pi like that. So 12 times pi, now let's remember our units. We said that the area was centimeters squared, so the circumference has to be units of centimeters. When you see problems like this, think of your circle formulas. Usually you're trying to solve for a radius and then you substitute that radius back into one of those two equations. Like you might see one where they give you the circumference and they want you to find the area. So you'd figure out what the radius was based on the circumference value they gave you. Then substitute that radius back into the area formula for a circle to figure out the area of a circle. Okay, well that's all for lesson two.